guys, Eric Kyle here, publisher of Great Lake Scuttlebutt Magazine. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a very special guest from MJM Yachts. I'm joined today with Peter Johnstone. He's going to tell us a little bit more about a new factory that they recently built down in the North Carolina area. Peter, how are you today, sir? Doing great, Eric. Thanks for having me on. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, My pleasure. Yeah, we have uh, set up an all-new factory in Washington, North Carolina. It's about 200,000 square feet, and it really addresses uh, MJM's needs for the future. We've uh, been building boats out of Boston for the last 18, 20 years, and uh, for the last five, six years, our capacity and output's been limited by the footprint available there. So MJM has now set up a all new factory to uh, help us expand our capacity and output. The MJM yachts are absolutely the top of the line as far as a performance yacht is concerned. I, I, I love these boats. I've been watching them for years and years and years. And it doesn't surprise me, Peter, that the popularity of these boats have gone up so much that you're actually looking for uh, additional space to be able to build more of them. So is this maybe part of what's been going on over the last year uh, with the increase in boaters to our marketplace? Or is this uh, just a consistent growth with MJM yachts and, and the interest that boaters have in your boats? Oh, it's a multifaceted impact on what's going on here. You know, my parents built this business over 20 years literally dock to dock, three yards in a cloud of dust, you know, sail by sail. Really re a remarkable story. They started this uh, when they were just about 70 years old. They're actually in their mid eighties and out cruising without help as we speak. So I'm really proud of uh, them and also what they've achieved. But MJM has um, really been an extended family for the first 15, 20 years, uh, there were four or five legacy dealers that are also family businesses like MJM. And they've really been the core of the brand. And, you know, I think my dad really just enjoyed working with those four or five dealers uh, and working really with just people he knew and loved and supporting them and their families. And um, MJM is, you know, has enough boats out there now to have critical uh, momentum, critical mass for the brand where it's starting to get recognized in the general market, not just the sort of former sailors and traditional New England market. So our distribution is expanding uh, quite nicely in the last two, three years. Our number of stores that carry MJM has more than doubled and will double again in the coming year or two. So we have quite a bit of, we have quite a bit more distribution and that's leading to a lot more demand as well. And I think that, you know, in general, MJM has been a leader in the market with higher tech composites, better hull designs, better fuel efficiency, um, you know, really higher performing boats for a given boat. And I think that the pandemic, um, you know, <laughs> the, the nice, there's not so much good news in the pandemic, but the boating industry for once in a crisis has turned out okay. Demand is actually up. We have a lot of new boaters coming in looking for a really safe activity for themselves and their families where they can really enjoy time together in the great outdoors in the best possible way. So I think you have a real coming together of several factors that are leading to a lot more demand for MJM. The one thing that I've always known about these boats and why I think they're kind of perfect for the Great Lakes is these are very sturdy, heavy, well-built boats. They have a, a like a Coast Guard rating, which is significantly higher than a lot of the other mass-produced boats that are out there. And here in the Great Lakes, we run across some really serious waters. Uh, they turn on a dime. And uh, MJM is known for that kind of 
performance. Maybe you could talk just a bit about uh, what is that Coast Guard rating? What does it mean to a boater, especially if they plan on doing something like the Great Loop in one of your boats? And also, how many different models are you guys producing uh, there at the new North Carolina factory? Okay, that was a lot of questions, Eric. I'll try and catch them all. If I miss any, just uh, interrupt me. The, uh, the boats are uh, designed to the CE uh, regulations. And some of our models are category A, which is rated for any ocean, any season, any conditions. And then some of them are rated category B, which is essentially any conditions within 100 miles of shore. Uh, the key difference, and there's no other boats in our sort of express or day yachting category that have these ratings. You've got to have much tougher uh, scantling or engineering uh, levels than your typical boat that's just built to no standard. Uh, the key difference to achieve these ratings within the CE standard is really your center of gravity. And in MJM, because it's a much higher tech and lighter structure, your center of gravity with your tanks and your engines is much lower than any other boat. It makes the boat much more stable and much more safe. If you were to take the boat out into one of those nasty days on the Great Lakes with 10 or 15 foot square waves, uh, you would find if you got sideways to the waves, a normal boat's going to be pretty scary. You're going to be worried about whether it's going to stay upright. And this boat, in any conditions, you're never going to have that uh, fear that you don't have enough st stability. The boats are incredibly stable. On top of that, all the MGMs that go out um, have Seakeeper gyro stabilizers. So if a, in a typical seaway, sideways to the sea state, you might roll a maximum of 10 or 11 degrees if it were a severe day. You put on the Seakeeper and you'll only roll one or two degrees. So in terms of ride comfort for a given size, these boats uh, feel like they're 20 feet larger in terms of that sense of safety and security. Well, again, they're absolutely stunningly beautiful boats as well. So I'm just kind of curious. It seems like these boats are very uh, kind of almost over-engineered um, for what the need is out there in the marketplace. So how are you guys um, in comparison to the other boat uh, models that would be can considered competitors in your marketplace. Uh, are you guys about the same as far as price point, a little bit more, a little bit less? Um, cost for these kind of boats, because they are so well engineered, um, does that affect the price? Absolutely. We are the premium brand in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a price premium, but you get what you pay for. These boats are all epoxy construction, uh, with high-tech e-glass and uh, structural foam cores. The boats are all built with vacuum bags so that uh, when the epoxy is curing, it's all compressed. So you have much better adhesion uh, between the different layers. Um, and you're right, the boats are a little over-engineered. But, you know, the way we look at it is... We build boats the way that we would feel safe out in the worst conditions. And that's what we would, we would only build that way for our customers as well. So over-engineered for uh, maybe the worst case scenarios you might run into in a lifetime of boat building or using your boats. Yeah, I would definitely feel a lot more comfortable out in the waters uh, in unknown conditions in an MJM than just about any other production boat, boat that's out there. So uh, talk to us just uh, briefly, Peter, about um, the different models uh, that MJM offers. Well, we've uh, it's interesting. MJM, this is another one of the factors leading to our growth. Historically, we've only had one, two, or three models available. Um, currently, we have... Uh, several variations of the existing models. We have a 35Z, which is a express cruiser, a 43Z mm -hmm. express cruiser, a 53 express cruiser. 
And now we have this brand new 3Z day yacht, which is about 38 feet long. And it will, in my opinion, redefine the day yacht market. It's got really comfortable bow seating, as you're seeing with a lot of the brands in the smaller sizes. Um, it has an enclosed head. Uh, the pilot house can be fully open or fully closed. So take your beautiful day on the Great Lakes. You might be all open air. Then the storm rolls through. If you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes and it'll change. Um, you know, you can fully seal up that pilot house and have full protection with heat or air conditioning. There's, there's just no other boats in the market that offer that comfort and protection and flexibility like our new 3Z offers. Outstanding. Do you see normally a lot of your customers that are coming to you guys post sailing careers or perhaps people who had trawlers that are coming to your kind of boats that want a little bit more giddy up and go? Or are you seeing people that are coming out of some of the larger production models and kind of deciding that this is going to be the last boat that they own, so they're going to make it the best one they've got? There's no question, you know, MJM comes from a sailing background, both my father and myself. And I think to succeed in the sailing industry, you really have to be on your game. And it makes, it forces you to another level in terms of uh, detail and technology and uh, care with weight savings. And it forces a lot more discipline in the build process. Um, sailboats are more complex structures and weights even more critical. So sailing is a natural feeder for our brand. I think that, you know, my father and I have both built in the tens of thousands of boats. Uh, so there's a natural following into the brand from sailing. I think that, you know, the original Express cruisers are very appealing to the uh, traditional Chesapeake and New England market, uh, particularly with the diesels. And as we added outboards about three, four years ago, really the first ones in this segment to, to convert to outboards, it really widened the appeal of the, the brand to the rest of the country. If you look at all of your coastal waters below New York City, all the way around to the Mexican border, it's all shoal draft. So for the first time, these really beautiful express cruisers um, were user-friendly for those shoal draft areas. And the sales have grown tremendously in the Florida market, in the Carolinas, in Georgia in the last four or five years, really thanks to converting to the outports. Well, I know the MJ Yachts are definitely top of my bucket list. So um, I want to just come back uh, for a moment, uh, Peter, if you wouldn't mind. Tell us a little bit more about this new manufacturing facility that you have in North Carolina. I think you said 200,000 square feet. Yes. it's. Um, we really wanted a home for MJM for the next 10 plus years uh, in a facility that would grow with us as we launch new models in the coming four or five years. We've always been constrained by space and capacity. And this is going to really allow us to meet MJM's potential. And, you know, frankly, the brand has had 12 to 18 month backlogs running now for five or six years. And you know, it's hard to grow a business when you tell a customer <laughs> that they've got to wait 18 months. So, you know, I know from a lot of uh, prior sales data with other brands, if you make them wait more than six or eight months, you're probably losing half your sales. Our, our feeling was that our sales could have easily been twice what they've been over the last five years, but we've always been constrained by our, our output limits. 
I think that this new facility will certainly help. And I know that there's an awful lot of voters up here in the Great Lakes that are very excited about the fact that you guys are going to be able to push out more votes into our marketplace. So, Peter, I just want to thank you today for sharing some information about what's going on with MJM. We love the boats. Looking forward to seeing more of them here on the Great Lakes. Is there anything that you'd like to say in closing while we've still got you here? No, Eric, great seeing you and thanks for your time. Absolutely. Be well, my friend, and we'll, uh, we'll certainly see you out on the water. All right. Sounds great. Take care.